Hi, welcome to my video. In it I'm going to briefly tell you about how you can anonymize your IP address. Now, as you know, who can monitor your web activity? Have you ever thought about this? Um, well, here's a quick rundown of who possibly can. I'm not saying they all do. Right, the first and most important one, if you're concerned about privacy, is probably your ISP. This is the person you connect through. So if you connect through um, work, your ISP is potentially the company runs your internet connection. Um, for most of us at home, it's the people we pay for our broadband cable or internet connection. That's your ISP. And basically, they can see absolutely everything you can do. Um, they see every website you visit, every video you download, every graphic, every message you send, email you send and receive, just about everything. And the ISP is the place if your government's tracking you or the agencies want to snoop on you, that's where they'll go because your ISP's got everything about you. The second one is each individual website you visit. So every time you go to a website, it looks up your IP address and records it. Not all of them record it, but the vast majority do. Now, most of them actually look up where you are by um, so they can um, change the way you access something. So, for instance, if I go to the uh, American media site Hulu, it'll look up my IP address, see I'm in the UK, and block me. So all these websites are using IP addresses um, to track who visits, a lot of them just for marketing reasons and uh, licensing stuff. Thirdly, anybody who has access to internet infrastructure. Now, the, the in, nobody actually owns the internet. It's all um, your web requests travel through a variety of different hardware, routers, switches, hubs, all over the world, um, owned and run by different people, all sorts of disparate people. There's an implicit sense of trust that um, the people who uh, run these pieces of hardware don't log all your data. Uh, unfortunately, it's not actually true because people like um, GCHQ and the American um, security services all log data, and I'm sure countries all over the world do as well. Uh, next, anybody who has access to logs to any of the above. So anybody who can access your ISP logs, whether it's the spotty 17-year-old uh, trainee up to a um, the CIA or the... MI5, whatever, anybody who can access the logs in your ISP or each website still has the potential to monitor what you do online. And of course, anybody who has access to your machine. So if you just normally browse the web, a history will be created of where you go, what you do. Um, and I'll show you how to bypass that after. Okay, that's next. So how are you identified? Well, basically it's mostly down to your IP address. Everybody has got an IP address when they connect to the internet and it's completely unique to that connection. Um, it, it, let's just take the example of somebody at home now. The IP address will be listed and linked to the person who pays the bill. So they'll have the address of the bill payer where the connection is made. So for most of us, that's our home address. So um, if my son is accessing a website somewhere, uh, he'll be doing it through my ISP account, and it'll be linked back to me. So it's basically however pays the ISP bill. Uh, if you're accessing from a corporate network or an educational network, um, there's an extra step there, but it can still be tracked to the individual machine. Um, whether that can be tracked any further depends on how your company or education uh, control access to your machines. If if you have one PC and you use it all the time, then it's pretty easily be linked back to you. If you go in and use one in a library that's not, there's no logs, not log to who uses it, then there's a bit more anonymity there. Uh, most of the time it can be tracked pretty actively down to individual people. So what can you do about it? Well, first of all, your machine. If the, the safest way to stop all the logging creating on your own machine, and it's probably the easiest to solve, is to use a privacy mode. All the browsers have privacy modes, which basically don't allow cookies, history, don't log anything uh, specifically on your machine. Um, the one I use, Chrome, is called incognito mode. If you look on each browser, they all now have a privacy mode, which doesn't keep logs on your machines. That's definitely the easiest way to do it. 
<coughs> right, how do you hide your um, IP address from the website you visit? Well, most people commonly use a proxy server. A proxy server will just sit between you and the machine you visit and will keep your IP address hidden. Uh, thirdly, to prevent logging at your ISP is the difficult one. To do that, a proxy won't work um, because um, an ISP sees every single piece of data, not just the request and the destination. Um, to do that, you need to use encryption. You basically need to use a combination of a proxy and an encryption to so that the actual data can't be seen at the ISP. It'll still be logged, but it'll be unreadable. The encryption is an important time. If you really want to anonymize your IP and keep your, keep some sort of privacy, you have to encrypt. Bog standard proxies are, are worthless, really, without encryption. So you have to encrypt your connection, whether it's with a VPN or um, SSH tunnel or something like that. It's, it's absolutely essential. It prevents logging at your ISP, so they can't see the destination and they can't see all the activity. It also prevents interception if somebody had access to some piece of hardware that's or a, 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 an important switch or router that a lot of it, uh, traffic goes through, or, or even your um, router, say your Wi-Fi uh, connection, something like that. If you're encrypted, they can't access that. So if you were in, say, a uh, uh, a wireless cafe or something like that, an internet cafe, and somebody had control was access logging on the um, the access point. If you were encrypted, they couldn't read it. They couldn't see what you were doing. They couldn't intercept your information. One last step: if you do use a proxy and a VPN, make sure there's no logging goes on on that. There's no point using free proxies or proxy servers you find online if you don't know how who controls them. Because although you'll be hiding your identity from the um, the specific website you're visiting, it's all being logged on your proxy server. And if you don't use encryption, it you're twice as insecure as not doing anything. If you're serious about anonymizing your connection, don't use free proxies. The the people the proxy or the VPN you're using must delete all the records. They mustn't keep any logging at all. Otherwise, you're just creating a new point to where people can monitor your activity. Now, I just want to quickly show you the, the program I use. There are a couple of others that um, you can use as well, but there's not many in the super secure level here. But I'm going to show you the one I use, and it's called Identity Cloaker. Let me just fire it up here. Uh, basically, it sits in my taskbar. It, um, you can change the encryption level, so um, here you can change it from none, strong, to maximum level. Uh, basically, if you put it on the maximum, it's virtually uncrackable. Uh, you can't get access it to it at all. It's built on a military-grade cipher called AES, um, which is virtually impossible to break. There are other security features that make it even harder to break on an entity cloaker. Here we have uh, hundreds of different servers, so you can basically choose where you route your connection through. Um, so there's everything from UK, German, Germany, Switzerland, Russia, France, blah, 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 wherever you like. Um, I also use this to bypass blocks, so I use it to watch all American-only websites, or if I want to watch BBC or UK television, I use UK um, servers. It's great for bypassing. Basically, it unlocks the internet as well. Uh, the For the real secu high level security, what you need to do is switch your connection. You can see here, I can select any country here, and I can tell Identity Cloaker to switch my connection to a different server and a different location every minute, every five minutes. That means, although Identity Cloaker doesn't keep logs, that means my connection is being routed through hundreds of different countries so it's much harder to break the encryption because it's being routed through loads of different locations you might get a slight impact on speed on this if you um, leave it switching because it'll it'll switch every so often you might f have a slight delay when it um, reconnects and also if you tell it any country, it might use servers in Australia and stuff like that, which are going to be a bit slower, depending on where you are. Obviously, if you're in Australia, it'll be quicker. But uh, for me in the UK, it'll be slower. Uh, in that case, you could just challenge it to switch between the nearest places. Then it'll switch between 
proxy servers that are fairly local to you and quite quick so you will notice minimal impact there that's really for high security if you're doing things like watching uk tv or streaming video and stuff i suggest just picking the country you need to bypass the block don't have it um, switching and turn the encryption down to minimal uh, that's um, not really necessary because uh, the encryption hardly slows it down at all but if you want to maximize your speed say you've got a normally a slow connection you'll get a slight very very slight impact on encryption okay right i'm going to finish there now and um, i hope this video has helped and um, thank you for watching my ip anonymizer basics bye for now bye bye